We've done Canadian pennies. We've done Canadian nickels. We've even done Canadian dimes. But what we haven't done is Canadian quarters. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure, and that's right. I've posted a video on my Canadian penny hunt and album fill, my Canadian nickel hunt and album fill, and my Canadian dime hunt and album fill. I felt like it was time to go ahead and get my Canadian quarters done. Now this jar of Canadian quarters along with these are all the Canadian quarters I have either found quarter hunting, were gifted to me in some of my mail calls, or were gifted to me just because a subscriber said, hey Rob, I live in Canada and I've got lots of quarters. Why don't I send you some? I want to thank Alfred, William Fowler, Jan Lewitt, and others for their generosity sending me some Canadian quarters. Now that we've got the jar and the two tubes, it's time to sort these by decade. Now, my books only go from 1870 to 2009. I do not have the 2010 and newer Canadian Quarter albums, so anything from 2010 and newer, I'm going to leave in the jar, but the 2000s will go here, the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, all the way back as far as I have. Now, I know I'm not going to have a whole bunch of silver ones because I only have half a tube or so, so I'm going to be missing a ton of Canadian silver quarters, but once I get my albums filled, I will definitely make it a point to try to get the collection completed. But for now, let's just see what we got. I'll bring you guys back in after I get all of these clad ones, including the ones in the tubes, sorted by decade. Well, here they are sorted. Everything in here is 2010 through 2019. This is all the 2000s, the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, the 60s silvers, the 50s, the 40s, and the 30s. I have not one Canadian coin prior to 1930. So, figured I'd start with this book and we'll get the 30s through 1952 done. Let me sort through them, see if I have multiples, choose the best, get this book filled, and I'll bring it back in. That being said, try not to laugh. I'm just now starting my Canadian quarter collection, so there's gonna be a lot of holes, but we all start somewhere. I'll bring it back in after I get this book as full as I can. Well, here it is. We actually had a 1930, a 1933, which is a lower mintage, which makes me happy. A 1940, it's in bad shape. A 43 and a 49. We also added a 1951, which I believe is the lower leaf. I know the higher leaf are typically proof-like and a lot more valuable. I really couldn't tell the difference because of the amount of wear on it, but I'm gonna guess it's the lower value one, the lower leaf. We'll add it there for now. I'm inserting this clip because during my editing, I realized I mistakenly said the wrong thing about the high and low relief 1951 quarter. I knew that the high relief was lower in value, whereas the low relief is the more valuable one. When I was placing the quarter in the album, I thought it's the lower value and I stuck it in the low relief, hence my blunder. Anyway, just wanted to clear that up. The A in Gratia, the last A, points to identical. This is definitely looking like the high relief, the lower valued one. Now that we've covered that, let's get back to the video. That's what we got so far in the first album. Now let's cruise on to 53 to 89, and I'll do the silvers first, bring you in, and then we'll do the rest of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and see how far along we get. All right, I'll be back once I've got the silver in that book. All right, so we found a 1956, a 1958, a 1960, a 1964 with some cool toning, a 1965, we did have a 1967 80% silver as well as a 50% silver, so that makes me happy. A 68 50% silver, and I went ahead and added the two nickel ones, a 68 and a 69. Not a bad start for the 50s and 60s for this album. Now I'm curious to see how many we have in the 70s and the 80s to complete this album. Let me get those two stacks sorted and I'll bring you back in for a full album review. So I figured I'd give you an update on the 70s since there's a couple of things I wanna point out. 
For the 70s, I did have the low minted 1970 and not in bad shape, I may add. Pretty happy about that, only 10.3 million minted. I have the 71 and 72. I have the 73 small bust versus the large bust, which I'll get to in a second. I have the 74, the 75, the 77, both identical versions of 78, which I'll elaborate on a minute, and 1979. So not too bad in the 70s. Now give me a second and I'll go ahead and cover the small versus large bust as well as the small denticles versus large denticles. So for 1973, there's two different Canadian quarters that you can look for, both the small bust and the large bust. Now the small bust is not really valuable, but the large bust has a lot more value. It's very tricky to figure out which version you have, but the easiest way to do it is to count every single one of those dots or denticles around the rim. Now you'll wanna do it on the reverse side with the queen showing, and if it has 120 denticles, it's the small bust. If it has 132, it's the large bust. I had five of these coins, I counted them all over and over and over and over again under the microscope, painstakingly, and every time for every one, I got a range of 118 to 121. So pretty confident that after several checks, we only had the small bust, the not so valuable one. In 1978, the Canadian quarter had two different varieties, the large denticles and the small denticles. The key here is to look at the second A in Canada and we'll go with the large denticles first. When you zoom in, because the size of the denticles are a little bit larger, that's those dots around the rim, the A is actually closer to those denticles. If we slide on over to the small denticles, you can see the denticles do look smaller and the A is further. So pretty self-explanatory here. Large denticles, A close to the rim. Small denticles, the A is far from the rim. We have both versions of the 78 Canadian Quarter and that makes me happy. Now, let's move on to the 80s and I'll update you once again. For the 80s, no varieties to look for, but we had most of them. 80, 81, 82, 83, which is pretty low mintage. 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, and no 89. So not a bad book overall. We got quite a few of them filled in. That makes me super excited. Won't take long to fill up some of these other ones pretty quickly, I would imagine. Now that we've done that, We've got to do 1990 through 2000 next. We have got the 90s through 2000 completed and it was a fun set to complete. Let me tell you, I had no idea there were so many cool different varieties in all the Canadian quarters for 1992 as well as 99 and 2000. We are missing a 91, a 93, a 94, and then we're missing a few of the Confederation 125th anniversary coins struck in 92, as you can see. For the Millennium, I don't have January, March, or June. And then for the Millennium 2000 series, which focuses on Canadian culture, took me a little time to figure out which month represented which part of the culture, whether it was pride, ingenuity, etc. But I figured it out. We got them all situated. I've got them all that makes me happy. So definitely not a bad start as well for these years. I would imagine over the next several months, I'll be able to fill this album up no problem. And most of the ones I have are in decent enough shape that I don't even need to upgrade them. Now that we've done that, all that's left is my final book, 2001 to 2009. And that's those right there. Let's see how many we have and what we need for the next decade. So we've got our 2001 through 2009 Canadian Quarter album filled in with what I've got. I don't have a diadem obverse because I don't have a 2003 P diadem. I also don't have an 01 quarter without the Royal Canadian Mint Mark or the P logo on there at all. But we do have an 01 and 02, no Canada Day. I have an uncrowned obverse here. Obviously, I don't have any 03 Ps, so I can't put one there. We've got the 04P, the 04P Remembrance Day. We do even have the St. Croix right there, beautiful. It's not the greatest shape, but I'll take it. An 05P, 
Missing the Alberta Centennial and the Saskatchewan Centennial, but I do have the year of the veteran. Got the 06P, the Royal Canadian Mint Mark with the 06, and the Breast Cancer 06P. No Medal of Bravery, but I have the 07 Royal Canadian Mint Mark as well. Now, when we go to the Vancouver Winter Olympic Games, I have most of them. We're missing the 07 Alpine Skiing, the 08 Freestyle Skiing, the 08 Bobsledding, but all the rest I have makes me happy. I also have an 08 Royal Canadian Mint, a Armistice from 08, and an 09 Royal Canadian Mint. And for the Vancouver Winter Paralympic Games, all I have is the 07 Wheelchair Curling. For the Olympic Moments, I actually have the men's hockey with the enamel and Cindy Klassen with the enamel as well. We are missing the women's hockey and the women's hockey enameled, but not a bad start for my Canadian quarter collection. At the end of the day, I had a lot of fun filling up what I could with my albums. My extra silver there for quarters, my extra 60s, 70s, 80s, non-silver, of course, nickel, and then my 90s and 2000s through 2009 in this jar, and then all of my 2010 and newer in this one, which I will use to fill up the next album when I get it. Obviously, I'm missing a ton of the older Canadian silver and quite a few of the Canadian silver from 1911 through 1952. But considering I don't live in Canada, I don't handle a lot of Canadian currency, I'm pretty happy with where my Canadian quarter collection sits today. Hopefully you guys found this video fun to watch, somewhat informative, and enjoyed seeing me go ahead and start filling up my albums. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.